This call is being recorded. If you do not wish to be recorded, please disconnect at this time. Good day. I am the voice of We Provoke Thought. I'm calling for your permission to engage in a two- to five-minute dialogue about various subjects not limited to global, domestic, or personal issues. Now, We Provoke Thought is an organization and show that is looking to be the platform for all those who have an opinion, idea, or educated information to share to the world, an outlet to voice your feelings and facts. Now, once we begin, you will hear a voice prompt, which you've heard already. You will be uh, informed that this phone call is being recorded, knowing and having full knowledge that the call is being recorded, that you agree to continue with the recorded call, and that you agree for We Provoke Thought to publish this call without releasing your identity, your phone number, your name, or any information leading to you. For We Provoke Thought, it is strictly uncensored and anonymous. And on We Provoke Thought YouTube channel, we will publish this here, and also on We Provoke Thought's Facebook forum, uh, the fan page. Now, uh, be, well, before I begin, I'd like to always ask, uh, what city and state are you in? I'm in New York State and within the five borough um, city. All right, good. Thank you. And uh, now, I called you, and you agreed to engage in this dialogue here. Uh, basically, what we provoke thought, uh, we basically want to get your opinion, your thoughts on various subjects that are going on uh, right now. A lot of things are trending. Uh, we have the privacy issue that is uh, constantly being talked about now in the news. Uh, President Barack Obama had actually addressed the public and in reference to our rights and our liberties being uh, basically stripped of when it comes to privacy. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a big topic right now. Uh, of course, we still have the Trayvon Martin case that seems to uh, uh, rear its head every now and then. But another issue that we've been having uh, is in uh, Jap Japan. Uh, we have Fukushima has been recorded of uh, radioactive leaks going on into the Pacific Ocean. But there's also a, a particular topic that I found quite interesting, and I think a lot of people will. It's a very trending issue right now where we're talking about the emasculation of men, the feminization of men, if you will. Um, but, again, I don't like to limit anyone to any particular topic that I raise. I always like to leave the forum open for you. So what would you like to discuss about today? Um, I think that topic is very um, it's uh, pressing. It's important, the feminization of, of men. It has to do, to okay. me, with um, the structure of the family arrangement. And um, okay. I believe, oh. which really makes, pisses me off, is, a lot of times when you discuss anything, as soon as you talk about uh, the creator, God, um, I like to call him by his personal name, Jehovah, people want to turn off. You know, it's politically incorrect, you know, to, to bring it up. But I feel like you have to go to the manufacturer if you have problems with the product. He created me and he created family. And if you ever want to get right, you have to go to the holy books to find out what is uh, the right hierarchy and theocratic order, based when I mean, you're talking about the, the family, and I feel like the man is the head. Now, I also feel like the opposition of of, of you know the family unit is Satan. Some people call him Shaitan. His whole objective since the Garden of Eden has been to break down the family arrangement. He went to Eve and he enticed her by saying, "Um, you're going to be like God. You're going to be higher than the man when you eat from this tree. You're going to know right from wrong." So right there, he started, um, you know. Uh, a rift, if you will, between man and woman because the woman was not playing her position. Nowadays, we have pop culture and music polluting the minds of a lot of women to make them feel like this independent spirit that they've developed um, is something good. I'm all for women having rights. I'm all for women being treated like they're supposed to, but the Bible is the blueprint. God created man, so if you want to go and find out the best way to deal with a man, you have to go to God. And he says that a man needs respect like a woman needs love. You have too many females out here trying to love these men and give them what they think they need. No, a man doesn't need you to love him. He doesn't need you to baby him. He needs you to respect him. He needs that to thrive, like a tree needs sunlight. We don't see that because the spirit of the world undermines the family arrangement, which is mankind's means for proper survival. And Satan hates you. He hates me. 
He doesn't want us to operate. So he breaks us down on the cellular level, which is like a family unit. He doesn't attack society. He attacks households. And the way you attack a household is to take it down from the head. So you see this disrespect that's forced. It's even in commercials. I never forget it. There was a commercial where the young lady is tied off a fabric softener or some type of uh, clothing, a, a washing powder commercial, and the, the father takes her miniskirt and throws it out. Well, she goes and defies him and puts it in the washing machine. The mother helps her, and then they all smile at him while she walks out the door looking like a tramp. It's little subliminal commercials like that. It doesn't happen overnight. It's a slow chipping away, a slow eroding at the family head that causes this attitude that feminizes men. So um, I, the only thing I can do is I can talk about it, I can get upset about it, but what I can do is I can be determined as a woman, especially a black woman, um, to make sure that my man is someone I'm respecting. By first choosing a man that I can respect, that's number one. And then number two, applying that respect to him, supporting him. Well, let me, ask, my position. let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. When do you uh, feel or when do you think that emasculation of men began or, or no, it's a two-part question. When and how, how do you feel uh, the emasculation of men had became uh, a, a, a forefront for us? I mean, you have words or tr- uh, trending names such as metrosexual. I guess that to kind of ease the whole, the whole process, if you will, make it seem uh, all right for men to become feminine in a way. When do, when do you believe that began, and how do you believe that men were uh, eased into this position, or do you even think that? Well, once again, I believe it started in the Garden of Eden with the destruction of the family unit. unit. I think it's been precipitated throughout mankind's history. Um, it was done during slavery. The man was emasculated to cause fear to destroy a people for, for the purpose of uh, oppression. So, you know, that, that gave, it, it's always been done. When a man has dominated other men, when cultures have conquered other cultures, the first thing they do is they want to, like an animal, when an animal attacks, he goes for the nuts. Excuse my, you know, terminology. But that's what happens with civilizations, with war, with strife. The first thing that's happened is the demasculation of men. More modern and more modern times, we see that Satan is using other devices. Homosexuality has always been around. It's been around during the Roman Empire. It infiltrated right. the whole Greek. It's not new. It, it was here when Sodom and Gomorrah, with, with, with Sodom and Gomorrah. It's been around for a long time. But you now see that he, see, he uses the same tricks. So now all you see is your time to use the same trick in your lifetime. Mankind's lifespan is 80 to 90 years. So he has to do, he, in order to foil this, the plot, he has to do it with every generation. Our generation is seeing a repeat of what's been going on since the beginning of time. You see this here nowadays because... You, uh, uh, the demasculation of men in another way is happening by forces outside. The fashion industry, most of these major industries are run by, I'm sorry to say, homosexuals. It's almost like they have a secret society. They're the one who is making the, making the clothing. They're in the fashion industry. They're the ones behind the scenes and undercover in the sports. They're undercover. They hide. So it is like a secret society. But what's going on is these men think it's okay to go wear a kilt. You're not from that country, and that's not your, country, your culture. So you're a man in a skirt, okay? And like I said before, it's a slight chipping away. No one's going to approach a straight man and just say, wear this dress, prance around, and forsake your natural place within the family arrangement. And he signs on for that. It happens gradually, like a chip that has no anchor and is it's drifting slowly away from the pier. If you knew you were drifting, if you were going fast, you would do something about it. But that's what makes it so dangerous. It's a slight drifting. So I see that these are all tools or machinations that are being used by Satan to, once again, in our generation, we're seeing it manifest through a lot of this uh, fashion, even the attitudes and music. Um, um, you know, F, uh, uh, F bitches get money. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want to say the F curse. It's the mother of all curse. Well, that's, I understand. Uh, I appreciate that. That attitude is more like, you know, it's, it, 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 it undermines the man-woman relationship, and it has these men on some screw the women. You understand what I'm saying? I think a lot of that is a lot of the undercover, you know, this metro thing. No, it's to make some other guy who, who's gay feel better about what he's doing because he knows that technically, you know, um, if, if you're looking at biblical and the other holy books, that he's being told constantly that it's wrong, sort of validated and make it right. He wants to make his ways mainstream. 
You understand what I'm saying? So um, I think that's a tool that's being used amongst other tools. There are many forces that demasculate, different motives that men are demasculating. And and I don't know what I I see that this was definitely a topic worth worth uh, speaking to you about. You definitely definitely have a, have a lot of thoughts about this. Uh, I just want to point out uh, just to kind of you know I always try to support or you know uh, provide facts along with uh, statements being made. But in '91, there was a Danish scientist uh, that presented the results of a study to a, a world. Health Organization Conference, uh, mm-hmm. and, it, and he showed uh, that the sperm counts of Western men had fallen about uh, half over the previous 50 years. Now, there were other scientists that could not explain for these findings and would rather just dismiss these as statistical flukes, but more than a decade later, the same scientists and others are still trying to explain the uh, apparent feminization of modern men. And mm. I go in. I go into that along with uh, that you are what you what you eat. Uh, there's yeah. chemicals being put in a lot of the foods in which we eat, along with the the, the products in which we carry our foods in. Uh, very popular chemicals such as bisphenol A, uh, it has been known to increase the estrogen level or suppress the testosterone level in men, and. You know, I definitely, from a spiritual point, I definitely agree with you uh, that it is the destruction of man led through the, the, the persuasion of, uh, of Satan or Shaitan mm-hmm. or, or mm-hmm. the devil. Uh, but along with that, you know, the devil does have little demons working for him. I and, certainly. you know, <laughs> we have these, these demons that work constantly, never sleeping. And making it, uh, uh, making their job easy would be us by allowing ourselves to be persuaded because the lack of spirituality, because the uh, the, the destruction of the family as well. So I mean, I, I definitely agree with a lot of things that you're saying, and I wanted to also just point out some of those facts, just pointing out different areas where folks can that are listening to this can look into it. You know, again, chemicals such as bisphenol A. There's other chemicals mm-hmm. out there that, that are definitely hazardous to our health. There are even products such as soy that at one point yeah, right. was never used uh, in, our, in our foods or what have you, which you find is, is prevalent right now. In almost anything that we eat, you cannot find soy outside of that product. The soy is constantly being put in the products in which we eat, which, again, is an estrogen mimicker. So you got to, a lot of folks have to pay attention, have to be a lot more diligent in not only their spiritual health, but their physical health as well. But I want to thank you, and before I I go, I want to always give you the last word here. So I would ask you from this point, what are your thoughts on who we can uh, look towards? And I think I already know the answer, but who can we look towards to helping resolve this issue that we're having with the emasculation of men? And why do you think that it is important for us to do so? Well, um, I think it's important to look towards yourself because um, we have a certain level of accountability. I can't even say uh, solely look towards God. I look towards yourself and ask him for help in your endeavors. Because we have a certain responsibility within our own family. We have a certain accountability and autonomy in our own life situation. So now that he has armed us through blessing us with these channels of getting information, if you're hearing it, it's a blessing. So now do something about it. Action is required on our part. What can you do in your everyday life to either minimize the hazards to yourself and your family, make someone close to you aware of it, or lead by example? All right. All right. Well, I thank you, uh, or again, allowing us to be the platform where you voice your thoughts. And as for We Provoke Thought, here at We Provoke Thought, we do not apologize for that. And I want to, again, thank you in the end before I let you go. But, again, for those that are listening, you can always tune in or provide your thoughts on various topics by simply calling 866 91 Voice. Once again, that number is 866 91 Voice. You may
may be able to find a lot of our calls on our YouTube channel, uh, We Provoke Thought, along with our Facebook fan page, under We Provoke Thought. And I'll soon to have a website, uh, www.weprovokethought.org and weprovokethought.com. Again, I thank you, caller, and at this point, I'll say goodbye to you on the other end, and I thank those for listening. All right. This call has been recorded.